non-call that ended the first half. The Seward screaming for pass interference here as Wall was trying to hit Aaron Schramm. And we will try to see. The goalpost blocks our view a little bit there, but uh, it looked like Chris Straub might have pushed him from behind. Nothing happens. So, Not a uh, catchable ball. That's the only thing about it. It's a moot point. But we did get to see it again. Rocky Hager a little bit fired up here as the Bison take the field for the second half. Looking for their third consecutive conference title. Some interesting numbers at halftime. UND on the short end. NDSU dominating, but uh, most of UND's numbers coming in that second quarter. All three first downs in the second quarter. All 64 passing yards in the second quarter. 83 yards of total offense in the second quarter. The Bison have been affected, but look at the time of possession. Two to one margin in favor of NDSU. And two turnovers, which uh, have yet to hurt the Bison. Well, with that kind of time of possession, and only down by seven points, that is a big break for the Sioux. Their defense came up big inside the 20-yard line twice in that second quarter. One on an interception, another time on a three-down-and-out situation. So, for the Sioux, they will get the football to start the second half because they won the toss and deferred. So, UND, really, outside of one drive, has been not heard from offensively. Okay, why don't you turn to your... And passing, again, the key for the Bison. Uh, so much made about the vaunted option attack, but the Bison are passing so effectively this year, and that's what makes them so dangerous. And as you said, on the road, it doesn't matter whether they're at home or on the road. Their record is incredible. The Bison will take the north end of the field to start the second half. It'll be interesting to see if the Sioux come out with the no huddle again. Perhaps if we can uh, get a word with Roger Thomas here before halftime, we'll find that out. Rory Hentz down on the field with head coach Roger Thomas. Rory? Hello, Roger. Can we talk to you real quick here? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go. okay. <laughs> well, apparently Roger is You guys uh, will get him on the show tomorrow night. And uh, he should be ready to go when time prevails. Now, what could possibly <laughs> be preoccupying him? <laughs> He's got a game to win. Rocky Hager closing in on Ron Earhart's all-time career winning record at North Dakota State. The record 61 wins. Rocky with 57. Again, we go to the second half, a close ball game, as it was a year ago. What is Roger Thomas telling his football team? Keep your poise, take it to the fourth quarter, let's make a big play. You're not going to blow out North Dakota State. They play every play. Their tradition is play 60 minutes. That's one of his favorite catchphrases is make the plays. It sounds so trite, but it is so true on a day like today. So the Sioux will get the football, having it only nine minutes. And Shannon Burnell just has not had the opportunities. He hasn't had the carries. He hasn't had the pigskin. And Corey Wall needs Burnell to run hard inside to set up his play action game. Burnell officially with eight carries, 29 yards, his long gain, nine. Hanson leading the Bison in rushing with 28 yards on seven carries. So as far as carries are concerned and opportunities, Burnell will blow his average going to the second half. The Sioux from their own 11. Osby across the 20 to the 28. That's where the Sioux will take over first and 10. You got a freshman out of Hudson, Wisconsin returning the kick against the Bison. Another transfer from uh, BYU, Josh Osby. So we have another transfer from Augustana and tight end Jason Schwab. So UND, their only serious offensive threat in the first half was a no-huddle, high-tempo type offense. Wall to the air on first down. Jelinski oh. in and out of his hands. He may have lost it in the sun. 
Trout on the coverage for the Bison. Wall does not seem to have a whole lot of zip on his pass to the outside. He definitely had the protection. Again, the no huddle. Burnell, the single setback. Wall going to the air. The short screen. Burnell, toast. They'll lose three. Big time play by the outside linebacker of the Bison. Wall lofted it over everybody, but the blocking didn't develop. Kevin Robson, the only man downfield on that side. You'll see it here, number 68. Just couldn't get enough of Toth. And Toth makes toast of Burnell. Bison have had great outside linebackers in the last 12 years in their championship years. Third down and long. They fake to Burnell. Hanson's chasing Wall. The throwback. Tight end Schumacher. Big play. First down. Sue at the 48. Eric Hagerly was there. But Schumacher stayed with it just enough. As we'll see it on the replay, John Schumacher, a big plate tight end from Reynolds, North Dakota, just down the road. Maybe we won't see it because of this no huddle. Again, first down, UND at their own 48. Burnell, the single setback. Bison defending the counter tray. Burnell finds his crease across the midfield strike for the Bison, 48. Ball ruled down before Jacobson picked it off the turf, and there you see Burnell. He's the kind of running back that gets better as the game goes on. It seems like the more carries, the more tired he gets, the better he is. Just like that old watch takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Second down. Let's make it a long five from the Bison 48. Bison in the 40 package. Wall. Aaron Schramm or Jelinski couldn't hang on. And Jelinski has missed two passes today. One of the end zone and that one there that you normally just don't see him miss. Well, that time, Corey might have had too much zip on the ball, and it is cold down there, but he should have had that those. ball. Got to make the catch on the ball in a big game like this. You can't ask Corey Wall to do any more than that. Third down and five. Picked off. Ooh, incomplete. Strout on the coverage of Schumacher, the tight end. And Wall threw that right into the thick of the coverage. Well, on the last big play by Schumacher, he was patient and patient. And this time, you see it right down the middle. And he probably should have had that. He got a hand on it. But good protection, good coverage by Strout. Well, Darcy Dollum punts again. Dollum in punt formation. The Sioux have been known to fake punts. Bison. Nine men on the line of scrimmage. Strout at his own 15. Excellent coverage by UND. And Alex Green, the man who made the initial contact, is hurt. The long snapper, number nine, limping off the field from Minot, North Dakota. Sophomore linebacker out of Minot. He appears to be okay, but he got shaken up. Looks like a possible ankle injury there. So Roger Thomas's team moved the ball 30 yards and had to punt it away. 13.02 remaining third quarter. Bison lead it. They haven't and they're doing the it by the air. They're not <laughs> running a football. First down and 10 from their own 16. Beachy to Sanchez, shy of the 20 on the dive. This is where North Dakota State can be relentless in the second half to chip away at you three, four, and five yards on the dive play. Next thing you know, eight, nine minutes have gone off the clock, and you haven't had any snaps. Second down, let's make it seven. 19 yard line. Again, Carl 
Nelson. Out across the 25 to the 26. Kohler, and we've got an injured UND player on the turf. Ten three buys and lead it, and we'll be back. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere, like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. SF-187, Cargill Sunflower Hybrid that produces the yield and oil for top and gum per acre. SF-270 is an early, higher oil companion for SF-187. These hybrids are the perfect pair to spread pollination risk and harvest workload. Remember the perfect pair, SF-187 and SF-270. Sunflower Hybrids from Cargill. Count on Cargill. This could be a real big blow to the Sioux defense. Their best defender, Monty Shade, down on the turf. He plays nose guard, regarded as one of the best in the North Central Conference. He's right up there with Sean Stewart. And the gray-haired gentleman in the middle of your screen there is Dr. Bill Mann. So if he is out there, you know it is serious. Monty Shade, number 77. Let's see if we can see it on the last play. buried in the pile right on the line of scrimmage and they still haven't moved him we're in the third quarter 12 17 remaining you wonder if it's a neck injury the way that they are taking their time with this heaven forbid speculation about the postseason. The big story around the country is Central Missouri State leading Pittsburgh 10 to 7 in the second quarter. That's Central Missouri beating the number one team in the nation. They were the sixth ranked team in the region and if they were to beat Pittsburgh you'd have to put them in the playoffs. Monty Shade being helped off the field. David Hillsheim, a freshman, will now take his place. Hillsheim from Minnetonka, Minnesota, has seen a little bit of action this year, but not as much as that man there. At least Monty is they walking. They are going to take shade right on into the training room. We'll get an update from Rory Hintz on exactly what his injury situation is. Third down. Beachy on the load. And he's across the 25, and he's got enough for first down yardage. Thanks to Eric Ski. So the Bison get their first first down of the second half. T.R. McDonald checks in the ball game now on first down at the 26-yard line. And the Sioux are happy to cover the two wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Peachy sees it. He's got T.R. McDonald wide open for a big play and all the way down to the 40-yard line of the Sioux. And again, the Sioux free safety gambling in the alley, trying to help out on the option. T.R. McDonald gets behind him on a post pattern. That's about the third time for McDonald today. The free safety is number 11, Brent Hansen. Tremendous protection for Beachy. See Kohler trying to hurdle a man there, but T.R. gets behind B.H. and Lane O. Gorman saves the touchdown again. 
First down buys it at the Sioux 30 yard line. The passing game of North Dakota State has been unstoppable today. Garen, the lone wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. The inverted bone. Beachy. To the 24 yard line. A pickup of six. You get the sense and the feel that the Bison offensive line is going to start to go to work now. Six T yards on first down. That hurts. T.R. McDonald with 100 yards already today, and UND's defensive backfield coach, Kyle Bubba Schweiger, said it this week. He said, I think the Bison will throw deep on us. The hard part is when they'll do it. Well, they're doing it often this afternoon. And on first down. Yep. Second and four. Hanson, a couple. And your youngster in there at nose guard. Hillesheim, the freshman at a Minnetonka makes the stop. Well, it won't take the Bison very long to figure out that Monty Shade's not in there. Now you've got a freshman nose guard. Now the Bison the are in center. They're in four down territory. It is not unusual for Rocky Hager to throw the football here on third down and short. Beachy in the alley. Down to the 10 yard line. First down North Dakota State. The corner on that side really ran off expecting pass. That down the line option pass is really tough. And NDSU has all but walked down the field here in their first possession of the second half. And O'Gorman appears to be the day's designated touchdown saver. There is an intangible here on the Sioux defense that is now taken away out of the equation, and that's Monty Shade's leadership. The Sioux defense looks a little flat right now. Flags. Beachy. Not much there. Hansen really coming up from that safety position. This is where the Bison will run that down the line option pass if they see that safety coming up on the line of scrimmage making a tackle and Arden gets up a little slow. And it would not surprise me if Arden Beachy is taken out of the ball game here if they get a two touchdown lead to save him for the playoffs. Mike Gidley is a very capable option quarterback. Penalty is against North Dakota State. <laughs> Believe the indication was illegal motion. Considering what the Sioux offense has not been able to do, this is a big, big series for the Sioux defense. First down and goal from the 15-yard line. Beachy, there's your down-the-line option pass. That ball's picked off by Kohler. Kohler at the five-yard line, an ill-advised throw by Arden Beachy. He was trying to hit his tight end, Eric Ski. And UND, again, comes up big inside the 20-yard line. Well, the Sioux defense is doing everything it can to stop the Bison from scoring. The only struggling area has been the offense, and that is the third interception of the year for Craig Kohler. He just threw it into a crowd, as you said, Eddie. He double clutched it. Look at that. And he hung it up there. Trying to hit his tight end. And Sanchez had fallen down two in front and of him. Kohler made a big play against Northern Colorado a few weeks ago inside the 10-yard line. Picked off V.J. Leachman. He Turned and, the ball game around. He and Perkins deep in their own territory. Here's Wall. Wall. He'll eat it. Oop. Punzak. Hansen. Sack at the three. Let's go down to Rory Hentz. Rory, what's going on with Monty Shade? Well, I can tell you this. I talked with Jim Rood, who is the athletic training coach or athletic trainer at the University of North Dakota. 
He is not saying anything. He does not want to say anything until uh, further notice. Dr. Mann apparently is in the uh, locker room right now with Monty. We really don't know much about the situation. He apparently was hit directly in the back. Schumacher, first down UMB at the 17-yard line. Negerly makes the stop along with Reshka. And Corey Wall made a big-time play by staying in the pocket and taking his second receiver. No huddle. Eight minutes remaining, third quarter. Bison 10, Sioux 3. Bison in the 40 package. Wall down the middle. Off the hands. Ryan Line Gang. And Line Gang, who is the other tight end in that two tight end offense, they really feature Schumacher, but Line Gang, let's take a look at it. Another shoulda. That's a great throw. Yep. That is a great throw. Great anticipation by the kid out of Jamestown, North Dakota. Bison coming on a blitz on the outside. They go into Burnell. And Burnell to maybe the 20-yard line. That'll bring up a third and long. Third and plus five, if you may. Number 70 there leading the way. Will Meeks out of Bismarck Century. He's another Sioux who's been trying to shrug off injuries. 7-18 remaining in the third. Third down and eight. They draw the Bison offside. Wall, he's going to be sacked. Sack number 28 on the year for the Bison defense. Hackman is there, but there's a flag down. That's exactly what Jeff Tesh told me yesterday. I said, can you pass protect? He said, not on third down, the way the Bison come after you. They give you a lot of different looks, a lot of different combinations. This will bring up a third down and short yardage now. Obviously, the suit to take the penalty offside against the Bison with 7.08 remaining. It's 10-3, North Dakota State. They have been turned back inside the 20-yard line three times today. And now a chance to huddle, and it's a different play call now with third and two. And we developed earlier in the pregame show about how the Bison have been putting the ball on the turf. They've had two turnovers today, one in the first series and then one in that last series on an interception by Kohler. Third down and three. Wall, the short pattern. Jelinski, first down, Sue at the 30-yard line. Third down conversion. The stadium is starting to shake. Jelinski, as we said, needs to get more involved, and involved he does, as he was double-covered, triple-covered there. He's a Freddie Bolitnikov-type receiver. Not great speed, a great route, and good hands. And good the smarts, Bison. too. They double up the wide receivers. They go to the counter tray, and it's a big play for Burnell. Across the 35 to the 37. And if that's an audible, Corey Wall picked it up perfectly because the Bison went to a nickel package on first down, doubled up the wideouts. They go to the counter tray and get eight yards. Second down and two. UND digging themselves out of a hole. Down 10-3, six minutes remaining, third quarter. Wall. Line gang. First down. is now in a rhythm. Look at him run that offense. I am so impressed with this kid. And he can get in a groove. As you said, earlier this year, he completed 14 in a row in one game. He's had key passes dropped here today. Right. Burnell. talk about this offensive line while we get two seconds. Brazzini, Robson, Fable, Meeks, and Denoma rising to the occasion. They picked up nine 
It'll be second and less than a yard. Coming up on the five minute mark in the third quarter. This is the most impressive drive of the day for the Sioux. Wall wants the throwback. He's got Shram at the 25. Tremendous play by Aaron Schramm, a little curling away toward the sidelines. We can't show you replays on anything because the Sioux are going with no huddle. But we got a good file tape. <laughs> First down and 10. 18 yard line. Bison showing blitz. Burnell inside the 15 to the 14 and there's a flag down. It could be a late hit. all started with the defense. Craig Kohler with the interception, UND's second of the day. And now the Sioux driving into the wind, 4.44 to go in the third, 10-3 Bison. And the brakes continue to fall UND's way. Here's the personal foul. There's Burnell getting hit. Oh, Gunner Gossert. Gossert. That was a good call by the official. Burnell was down for at least a second and a half. This place is rocking. Our press box is shaking. It's been 12 years. Bison 10, Sue 3, 430 remaining, third quarter. First and goal, eight yard line. Wall, the sideline, touchdown UND, Jelinski. Today, Max. Brady, Brady, you there? Rosie, you're just in time. Problem is, Brady, we got a bad front rolling in. Bad? What do you Best mean? Best I can do is drop one thing. One. What's it gonna be, Brady? There are some things people would do just about anything for. Smooth, refreshing strokes. It's not just any beer. Catch you next time, Brady. It's strokes. Any requests? Pretzels. Cook Sign Company has been putting up high-quality, eye-catching signs all over the Tri-State area for a long time now. And they're proud of the fact that they can give your business the first-class look you deserve. Ask the guys at Cook Sign Company how an attractive sign can be one of your most effective advertising tools. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Call Cook Sign Company and find out what a good sign can do for you. Cook Sign Company, Fargo and Bismarck. Outside backer. Outside backer. You got the end. The most impressive drive of the day for the Sioux. Corey Wall had his kind of a drive. And I kind of got the feeling that the offensive line is starting to play with a little confidence for North Dakota. That's all it takes with these guys. It's a young crew, but 
an old young crew, if I can use that terminology. A few seniors on that line, guys who have been waiting for their chance this year. And as you said, once Wall gets in the groove, look out. And that corner pattern to Jelinski, that's been a favorite between those two all season. And we have got a football game. Look at Jay Wandler there, trying to urge the crowd on. I don't think he needs to. Everybody's on their feet. Roger Thomas has been so close. He's lost him in the first quarter. He's lost him in the last minute. And he has waited all year for the last 20 minutes of football. Carlson at his own 15. Still on his feet and wrapped up at the 26. And you get the feeling that the Sioux want to swarm to the football. They are playing with a lot of emotion right now. And Rory hints down on the sideline, you got to feel it. Well, I tell you what, you know, I just talked to Tim Jelinski, and you talked about the sun earlier. He said that he turned around. He did not even see the ball coming. He did not even see the ball into his hands. Absolutely incredible. On the his touchdown old team, test. His old team playing for the state championship today. First down and 10. Here come the Bison. And the Sioux. Going to play those wide receivers man-to-man -man again. Just challenging Arden Beachy to throw the football. This is Mark Hansen on the dive out to the 30-yard line. We're at the four-minute mark in the third quarter, and we are tied at 10. And when you look at the numbers, it's supposed to belong to the Bison at this point in time in the game. What do they say? This is one of those games, though. You can throw all that out the window. Right now well, you can. We, we are knotted up. The Sioux shading their defensive tackles to the outside, and it's paying off. This is Carlson. That adjustment they made to the defensive tackles gave the Bison a different look they had not seen, and the Sioux almost a gambling defense. They had both their defensive tackles in a five-man front playing in the gap outside the offensive tackles. You see Pat Murth, the 95, come in, and Beachy just gets away, but here's Brent Hansen, the free safety, number 11, Craig Kohler, Jay Wandler, Sean Hansen. And you see Hansen, number 11, in the alley. He is just challenging the Bison to throw the football off that play action down the line option. Well, it's third down. Maybe this is the time. And Arden Beachy wants a timeout. 2.53 remaining in the third. We are tied at 10. And we'll be back. Pontiac, GMC Truck, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Mazda. Five good reasons Selland is your automotive superstore. Another reason, super deals like this. A 1993 Pontiac Grand Am with anti-lock brakes, air tilt, and much more. Only $12,995. Just $12,995 for a 93 Pontiac Grand Am. So shop the superstore. Selland, south of I-94, Moorhead. Dakota State has just used a timeout to get the right play on third down and six from their own 31. Cahill and McDonald are drawing one-on-one -on -one coverage. The Beachy blitz. on the option. The Sioux smell it out. Carlson. Whoa. Jeff Perkins and Sean Hansen had it all the way. Perkins showing blitz right from the word go. You can only compliment the Sioux defensive staff. And they're doing it without Monty Shade. 
They're doing it with a great design and knowing what the Bison are going to run. Perkins, number 23, was up on the outside. Here's 92. That's Sean Hansen. He's a defensive tackle who was lined up outside the offensive tackle, which is an adjustment they made this series, and the Bison are having a tough time with it. Another 10-man rush here. Tate Mosier. They've almost blocked a punt earlier today. He'll get this one away. Short Haggard. Kick. Oh, oh, loose ball. It's still on the turf. The Bison say they have it. The official has said this nothing. This is a big play in the ball game. North Dakota State players say they've got it. It is Bison football. took maybe one step up too much and misjudged the ball and it hit his shoulder pad. The special teams have had their down moments for the Sioux this year. Although they thought they had the problems corrected. Here's Haggard. He probably should have to... called a fair catch. Steve Hansen out of Oaks, North Dakota on the great coverage for the Bison. Roger Thomas' staff is furious. They say he didn't have a chance to catch the ball. You got to give the receiver five yards to catch the ball. Beachy wants to throw it on first down. T.R. McDonald down to the nine-yard line. And you could see it coming the way the safety has been playing the last series. It is a major gamble by the Sioux defense to continually bring that safety that close up, trying to defend that down the line option. Well, guess who? There's number McDonald. 11. 11 is Brent Hansen in the on the bottom of your screen, playing up and getting burned again as McDonald finds the hole and it's O'Gorman and Holder stopping him, but it's at the nine. From momentum at their own 30 for the Sioux, two plays later. The Bison are knocking on the door at the nine-yard line, and Tater trying to... They're Wait. saying that ball's down. They're well, saying that the running back was down. Bertha came out of the pile, but the ball, the play was blown dead. Well, it's up to the Sioux defense again. This game... Oh, oh. oh, Mark Ewan said something to the referee, and that's uncharacteristic. This game is filled with emotion. You? And it's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against North Dakota. There is you, and he was so furious, he tore his helmet off. Well, he thought it was a turnover. He thought they had stripped the ball from the running back. I'll tell you what, that fumbled punt is a huge play, and Roger Thomas was all over those officials. And then the next play, they hit a big pass, and now they're knocking on the door. That puts it inside the five. Commissioner Noel Olson is sitting down in the press box. He always wants a review on his official. He's going to get an earful here in Grand Forks today after that call. This is the same officiating crew that had the trouble with the return punt in the Morningside Mankato okay, okay. game early in the year. Second down and goal for the Bison at the Sioux four-yard line. 90 seconds remaining, third quarter. Carlson to an eye formation. Oh, oh, is he hit at the line of scrimmage? Biggest hit of the ball game by Jay Weinler, the linebacker for UND. Well, we said it would be up to the defense, and Jay Wadler does his part. Watch him with a clean shot at him. Boom! Mark Hansen missed his man, number 30, the fullback. Wadler gave him a little fake, a head fake, and went in and put a hat on Carlson. That's linebacker play right there. We are tied at 10. 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is third down and goal at the four-yard line. Peachy in trouble, loose football, they say he's down, and again, the Sioux say they didn't, should have had oh. a turnover. John Willett.
Trubisky right there. Roger Thomas standing nearby. Now they calm things down. They were upset. The Sioux defense has stopped the Bison four times today inside the 15. You know what was so funny about last year? The Sioux were scoring points. They said they couldn't play any defense to beat the Bison. Today, it's just the opposite. That's a turnover right there. That's a turnover. Well, some controversial that calls That should here. have been a turnover. The Bison on a Ludwig Milfors 23-yard field goal take the lead as time runs out in the third quarter. It's 13 to 10, and we'll be back. She works so hard, I wish we could afford to send her to college. I know I'd make the most of it. There must be a way. Maybe Norwest Bank could help. Don't they make student loans? The Norwest Student Loan Center has the information you need about college financing. We'll help fit the pieces together to turn dreams into reality. Call us to learn more or visit your local Norwest Bank. When you come to Norwest, come to expect the best. Fourth and long. Looks like a pass play for sure. The quarterback under center. There's the snap. He's back to pass. Checks downfield. Finds a receiver. It's in the air. Whether you're playing to win or working to achieve your personal best, Dakota Sports Medicine helps you get the most out of your sport. After all, sports aren't just about winning today. They're the beginning of a lifetime of good health and fitness. Dakota Sports Medicine, 280-3226. Everybody wins. is just beside himself on these officials. Go, sir! This is where a head coach has got to count on his coordinators to run the game, and Roger's got to run those officials. Well, that's what Roger tells the team, is let the coaches handle the officials, and that's why it was rather uncharacteristic there for Mark Ewan to get the penalty, but we'll see if we can take a look at that play a little bit later. I don't know if this is good news or not, but the Sioux wide receivers will have the sun at their back. And the win. Jeff Erickson. And he's to the 26. Let's go down to Rory Hicks. Well, the whole Sioux defense feels as though they were robbed on that. And, and uh, you know, it's so, uh, that, that, that is the case. That, that is... You can't change it. Uh, I mean, the beat goes on. I mean, Milfors with the, the field goal. Here comes the offense. They need to move and groove, and they need to go to that quick uh, quick drill. Now, can Corey Wall continue in the rhythm that he had in the last drive? Sweeney on pressure underneath. Ooh. No flag. Haggard, the intended receiver. Moses and Shafter. Right there, Steinberg is down. Matt Steinberg slowly getting up off the turf. And you know, not that he's doing this, but that's an old trick to have a bad ankle when the no huddle offense is coming up. <laughs> there you see Sweeney, 92, has been bothered by injuries, had a little pressure on Wall. And that was a clean defensive play, no interference there. A no flag was a good call there by the official, and Haggard just couldn't hang on. It'll be second and 10. That stops the clock with 14.50 remaining in the ballgame. Second and 10. 26 yard line. The draw. This is Burnell. Breaks an arm tackle. He's across the 30. There's a flag down. It's going to be on the Bison. We've just been told that Sue Noseguard, Monty Shade, has been taken to United Hospital for x-rays. He is done for this day. Now, keep in mind, 
that the last drive that the Sioux had, and they'll get a first down out of this penalty, but the last drive that the Sioux had, they picked on Jacobson on the corner. And now Jacobson's got Jelinski here. One-on-one -on -one as Corey Wall brings his offense up to the line of scrimmage. Augustana leading Mankato 35-14 in the third quarter. The Vikings will do their share of politic in trying to get into the postseason. This may back the Sioux into a must-win situation. They double the wide receivers. They run the counter tray. Burnell picks his way across the 40 for four yards. Got away from Steve Hansen, but not Joe Toth. And once again, the no huddle. I am really impressed with the way the Sioux have been able to move the ball and organize their offense into no huddle offense. Wall has time. Oh, again, a drop pass. That's four drop passes on the day for the Sioux. And Schumacher, who came into today's game with 17 receptions, had missed three games and played tentatively because of an ankle injury. This is a tough throw. Izzy Moses almost jumped on it for the INT. Again, third down and six. Wall with the audible at the line of scrimmage. He's being pressured out. Wall is going to eat it. He'll have a first down at the midfield strike. He had Burnell open on the left side, but I believe he is looking to Schumacher. Doesn't matter now. It's a first down. The Bison did a good job of holding Schumacher in the secondary that time as Wall bailed out of the pocket. I looked downfield and I knew he was looking for Schumacher coming across. He was tied up. He ran for the first. It's at the midfield stripe. Burnell picks his way for a few across the midfield stripe to the Bison 46 and a half yard line. Rory, there is a, a sense along the Sioux sideline, Rory, hence that that electricity hasn't left them. Well, you know it is, Ed, and I, I, I actually, I did not quite hear you. It break, broke up on you. <laughs> okay. Second, there's a lot of noise uh, down there. A lot of electricity on our signal, too. The bounce fake. The throwback. Whoa, he's, he's got, got a man Schramm. open. He had Schramm and Jelinski. He had Schramm beyond Jelinski down the field. That had six points all over it. Watch this. Let's see if a camera can pick up. Aaron Schramm was wide open beyond. Corey double clutches here. Here's Jelinski crossing to the bottom. He's got the man beaten, and the man fell down there. He had two receivers open. Third and seven. Wall throwing on every down. Jelinski! Oh! In and out of the hands of Jelinski at the 10 yard line. That is the fifth drop pass on the day for North Dakota. Corey Wall can't do anymore for this football team. Well, it's the old story. Maybe you should throw it uh, somewhere besides their hands. The Sioux just can't hang on to the ball today. But there's another story here, Pat. These guys are repeatedly wide open in right. the Bison secondary. Right. He had uh, Hagerly 16 rush to 18 behind him, and now the Sioux will have to punt. Again, the offense unable to cash in, the defense doing all it can. Thirteen oh six remaining in the ball game. Bison lead thirteen ten. Dolan. Look out, Mike Mooney. But It'll be a touchback. touchback. The Sioux defense has got to get it done, and the Bison offense has got to gear it up. And we'll be back. Why are so many people attracted to the 93 Grand Prix? 
could be because the Pontiac Grand Prix has standard air, automatic, and a fuel-injected V6. It could be the way the Grand Prix handles. It could be the low price. Just $239 a month with a Pontiac Smart Buy. Or it could be that so many people are attracted to the Grand Prix because so many people are attracted to the Grand Prix. The 93 Grand Prix, just $239 a month. See your local Pontiac dealer. Bison Pride. That championship quality is strong at NDSU. That same championship tradition is upheld by the Varsity Mart, NDSU's bookstore, carrying the best selection of official Bison licensed products. No matter what sport you support, the Varsity Mart can help you show your colors. They have the largest selection of Bison sportswear and Bison imprinted souvenirs available. So for that look of a national champion, come to the Varsity Mart, located in the Student Union, the heart of the NDSU campus. Corey Wall has done all he can do for Roger Thomas. Now Roger Thomas has got to watch his defense try to get the job done with 12.58 remaining. 13-10, Bison with the lead and the football. Mark Hansen meets Kohlers at the line of scrimmage. Craig Kohler, 6'3", 230 senior. Craig, the leading tackler on this Sioux defense. 53 tackles coming into the day. Make it three interceptions now with the one today that set up the touchdown pass to Jelinski. Now, it's going to be real interesting to see what the Sioux defensive staff comes up with their free safety now that they got him in a second and ten situation. He's playing a little deeper right now. 20-yard line. Beachy wants to throw it. Cahill, out of bounds, 29-yard line. No! Oh, they say he did catch it. He caught it. He just, just shy of the first down. Sean Cahill out of Harvey, North Dakota. There were some people around the state that thought NDSU would just roll over. the way the Bison defense had played in recent weeks. Third and a yard. Peachy. He has the first down. Out to the 35. What balance. Shane Sedin looks on from the Sioux sidelines. Beachy keeps the drive alive. Now 12 minutes and 8 seconds, and the clock winding down. Lots of time. Lots of football left. Rocky Hager, on first down, has thrown the football for big yards here today. Cahill in motion. Beachy, on first down, has got McDonald down the middle. He'll take the sideline. Cahill, big play at the midfield strike. And Chad Holder saves a big play for the Sioux defense. Well, Arden Beachy took quite a hit there from Pat Murtha. That was a heck of a throw and a heck of a read by Beachy. He waited, was patient, finally took the second receiver. But Beachy, as resilient as ever, is right back up. TR. There's McDonald putting the move onto the right. Or there's, Mc, there's McDonald and there's Cahill trailing on the play. Hanson gets blocked out of the play nicely, and then it's up to Holder. Back to the game. 46-yard line, first down. Beachy, wrapped up, right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Mike Mooney got the first piece of him, Mr. Enthusiasm on the suit defense, number 46. This is as physical a suit team on the front seven as I've seen in a long time. And they should be, they're seniors. Second and 10. The Sioux substituting freely here with time winding down. There's the first contact by Mooney to slow him up, 46, and then he's buried. That's called 11 men to the ball. Both teams preach it. 
Reverse. McDonald, he's got a wall. He's got a first down. Inside the Sioux 35. Well, we saw that the last couple of weeks from the Bison. I'm surprised Rocky called it. But then again, he's been throwing on first down today. It's the first time we've, uh, well, the other two times in the last two games, he did it uh, with a big lead, this time with a score 13 to 10, and it works for a first down. This is a big drive for the Bison offense. Right. Momentum sh could sh uh, shift, and now here you got the Bison throwing on first down, running reverses. 33 yard line. Beachy trying to trigger the DBs. Garrett knocked down by Hanson and O'Gorman. The Devil's Lake connection. Lane O'Gorman cutting across and Brent Hanson. Again, Rocky throwing on first down. Now it's second and 10. University of North Dakota needs a big play here on defense. 10-12 remaining in the ball game. 13-10, Bison lead it. 33-yard line, second and 10. Three receivers in the formation for the Bison. Sanchez, he did it a year ago. He's inside the 10. This will be a Bison touchdown. your ticket to sporting events, shows, concerts, from Ticketmaster and Sunmart. From the Fargo Dome, to the Metro Dome, to the Hoosier Dome, to local, regional, and national sports, concerts, and performing arts, shopping for tickets is as easy as shopping at Sunmart. For events in North Dakota, Minnesota, and across the nation, come to Ticketmaster, the world's leading computerized ticketing service. Ticketmaster, at the customer service counter in all six Sunmart stores. That's the ticket. Nissan would like to remind you that right now you could save up to $1,500 on a four-door, four-wheel drive Pathfinder. And that winter will be here sooner than you think. Test drive a Pathfinder now at your nearest Nissan dealer. See FM Automart. South winds. The North Dakota Class A High School football title today, 21-13 over Bismarck. Dale Hurdles. No. I thought they played Minot. That's true. <laughs> they played Minot. They played Minot today. and Fargo. Same score, though, <laughs> over Minot. And that is Dale Hurdle's seventh there state it is. championship. There we go. His seventh state championship. Northeast Missouri has defeated Missouri Rolla 36 14. That will put Northeast Missouri in the playoffs and most likely at Dakota Field next week. Augustana over Mankato State in the third, 35 14. The Vikings will make a strong case for the postseason. This one has yet to be decided. Taken by the up back at the 30 yard line, and here comes North Dakota Steve Sorensen, a freshman out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. So if there's magic left in Corey Wall's right arm, he's got to use it quickly. 
He's got 9.58 to work with, and he's down 20 to 10. And if they had just caught the ball on him, who knows where we'd be at this point. If they catch those five drop balls, they're up there at uh, 200 yards passing. Easily. And then some. Good field position for North Dakota at their own 44. Bison showing blitz. Wall, the sideline. Jelinski picked off. Jacobson, they're going to say it's incomplete. Oh, I thought Tim Jacobson had that one. Well, we had one go the other way. Let's check this one out. Tough to tell. Maybe we can get a front view of it here. I thought he had it. Well, the, the official right there off to the right. Yeah, that's right. He was right on it. Second and 10. Wall on the scramble. He's got room. Wall to the 45. He's got a first down. the key blocks. Corey Wall with a big scramble puts the Sioux back in business with 9.41 remaining here, down 20 to 10. I mean, this is Elway material right here. He just knows when to bail out. You see the tight end crossing there. That's line gang. Watch the lick he puts on Israel Moses. You don't see it. And then Hager coming up here. But the Sioux are ready to snap the ball. Back we go. Burnell. Burnell picks his way to the 20 yard line for seven yards. UND's offense has really found the groove here in the second half. They've stopped themselves with drop passes. The Bison stopped the Sioux only one series here in the first in the second half today. the outside linebacker along with Hagman the defensive tackle stops the clock with 908 remaining but again a big third down here now Roger Thomas has got to make a decision here on whether he wants four down territory or whether he's going to attempt a field goal if they don't get anything here this is a crucial call in the ball game right here, and that's why he's going to call timeout. Let's keep it here. I, I knew that had to be a crucial call there because you're only going to get so many possessions against the Bison in their own territory in the fourth quarter the way the game has gone. They've got to come away with something here with nine minutes to go. Well, we said it in the pregame show. Corey Wall... Gutsy. He has certainly shown plenty of that today. But it would have been easy for him to get down on his team. He has kept the Sioux offense in it despite at least five drop passes and a solid defensive effort. A win today gives either team the conference title. But if the Sioux lose, some UND folks think that uh, the Sioux will not get invited to the playoffs. The Bison are pretty much a lot. That last run by Shannon Burnell put him over 1,000 yards for the season. He came into today's game with 927 yards. Hey, let's go! And now with 9.08 remaining, this may be the crucial third down of the ball game. Lots of time left, but how many times are you going to get here? Third and three. Wall. The throwback. He's got Shram. Touchdown, Sue. Thomas. 20 
to 16. And a crucial conversion for Darcy Dolan. The Sioux cut it to three with 9.02 remaining. And there were some crucial plays in that drive and some crucial calls by the Sioux coaching staff. Here's the throwback. They hit it earlier today, Pat. Well, we said he likes that corner pattern, and that's exactly where Aaron Schramm out of Carrington High School is. He's got the step on Sean Carlson. Good block there by John Schumacher, the tight end, to give Wall that extra second. I have watched the Bison all season long. This is the best pass protection I have seen a quarterback get against North Dakota State this year. On some big plays, Wall has been under no pressure. They have protected him well. They went for the touch instead of the first down. They've been known to go for the bundle and go for the gamble. They've got caught a few times gambling on defense, but a gutsy call. Bob Bollinger, the offensive coordinator, up in the booth. But again, a lot of time left, 9.02. Just a minute after that long touchdown run by Sanchez, and the Sioux are within three. He ran one back against Omaha. He'll let this one go. It's a touchback. This has been an amazing game of momentum. I mean, the Sioux score on their last drive. Before that, the Bison score. Buy a ticket. We got a lot of football left. And now we really go back to what we said before. Who makes the fewest mistakes, especially in crunch time? Pat, you and I have been here before, and I've said this in the past. Let's reverse it. UND has made a statement today. They are taking the number two team in the country to the wire. North Dakota deserves to be in the playoffs. Beachy. They string it out. He finds a way to pick up six. Roger Thomas, listen to him. He is really working over these officials. He says people are on the line of scrimmage. Too many men on the line of scrimmage. He wants the flag thrown. And they're still yelling. Roger's feisty. He's not like that in the office. Hey, this is it for him. We're inside the nine-minute mark. Second down and two. Beachy. Cahill. Big play. First down, Bison. From Harvey, North Dakota, comes Sean Cahill with a first down at the 41. Jeff Tater making the tackle, but only after Brent Hansen and Blaine O'Gorman could not. And Brent Hansen, the free safety, is limping. He's got to leave this game. This game has potential of going down as one of the all-time greats in this series. Brent this second half has been well played, and we've got Brent Hansen leaving. He's running straight to the training room. And Monty Schmaltz now comes in. Schmaltz, a junior out of Bismarck. Played for Dan Schmeeker. First down, 41. The dive, nothing there. The Sioux trying to be physical up front and getting it done here. It's big Brian Hamlin, number 94 out of Moorhead. The clock continues to tick, 8.08. Well, here's the catch-22 for the Bison. Their passing attack has brought them to this point today, 20 to 17. But when you have the lead like this in eight minutes to go, you're so doggone determined to run the clock out and pound a few first downs. The Bison could put the game away with this drive with one of their patented fourth quarter, six-minute drives. Peachy to throw. That'll stop the clock. 
That's the catch-22 right there. 